Coming up tonight on Murrow News 8, gunfire escalates in Mosul, leaving civilians without homes. Then we take a look into Mental Health Week on WC's campus and how students can stay aware. And tonight is the last game in the 2016 Baseball World Series where it is all tied up. Those stories and more tonight on Murrow News 8. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Abby Lushai. And I'm Shannon Josie. Thank you for joining us tonight. Race once again found its way into the 2016 presidential campaign yesterday when a black church in Mississippi was vandalized and set on fire. The words, vote Trump, were spray painted across the wall of the church. No injuries have been reported and the FBI is investigating to see if any civil rights crimes were committed. This event comes paired with the most current issue of the KKK newspaper, running a front page headline of Make America Great Again. The Trump campaign has denounced the headline and calls the publication repulsive. Tragedy strikes the Iowa police force this morning as two officers were shot and killed. Kim Hutcherson has the story. Two Iowa police officers were found in their <coughs> vehicles, fatally shot at separate intersections in the Des Moines area early Wednesday. The first was discovered just after 1 a.m. About 20 minutes later, a second officer was found at an intersection less than two miles away. He died a short time later at a nearby hospital. It doesn't appear that either officer had an opportunity to interact with the suspect. It doesn't look like there was an exchange of conversation. Uh, both officers were seated in their cars and, and were shot while they were sitting. 46-year-old Scott Michael Green was taken into custody after a seven-hour manhunt. He was just walking down the road, flagged down a DNR employee. I don't think it was a DNR officer. Flagged down a DNR employee, presented his driver's license to him, told him to call 911. From there, the responding deputies took him into custody without incident. Police said Green was known to authorities and had recently been in an altercation involving the Confederate battle flag during a high school football game. He was waving it during the national anthem and he had picked uh, some people of color to wave it in front of and although they didn't complain to us, there's people in the crowd that felt that was offensive and that he should be removed from the stadium. Locals have rallied around their police departments as news of the shooting spread. The deceased officers have been identified as Des Moines PD Sergeant Anthony Bominio and Urbandale Police Officer Justin Martin. I'm Kim Hutcherson reporting. Iraqi forces are still in the midst of their attempt to liberate ISIS-controlled city of Mosul. The city's eastern suburbs are almost within reach, but seemingly endless gunfire, ISIS snipers, and mortar shells are keeping troops from breaking through the perimeter. For now, more than a million civilians remain trapped in the city with no escape route. For them to an attempt an escape would mean risking their lives. This will result in one of the largest challenges for the Iraqi forces in the upcoming fights, whether people are friends or foe. With the fighting in Aleppo growing deadlier by the day, Russian President Vladimir Putin declared a 10-hour humanitarian pause to take place this Friday. This truce comes after a rebel assault on the regime held parts of Aleppo claimed 84 lives over the weekend. Previous attempts for a truce have quickly ended with accusations from both sides about the opposition breaking the agreements. The most recent ceasefire in October was one of the most successful as it was originally planned for only eight hours but led to the fighting being suspended for several days. Most people are aware when they have a cold or flu, but not many are completely aware of their mental health. Murrow News 8 reporter Amber Rusbashan gives us all the details on a Mental Health Awareness Week on campus. Amber. Well, Abby, ASWSU is very excited to put on the mental health awareness events this week in the hopes of bringing the community together and um, having them share and learn about their experiences. I was able to talk to the Director of Student Life um, and discuss the importance about shedding light on um, the stigma that mental and emotional health um, bring on our campus. Anxiety, depression, and suicide are just a few of the many mental health problems college students deal with. The Health and Wellness Center and ASWSU are pairing up this month to raise awareness about mental and emotional health. Their goal is to destigmatize mental health problems so people feel comfortable talking about it with their friends and loved ones. 
Director of Student Life Megan Ferguson emphasizes the importance for being there for one another. Even if you don't suffer, but you may come across someone in your future, be there for them. Make sure that you're being an advocate for those who don't have a voice because unfortunately, most of the time when people suffer, they don't like to talk about it. And other people who aren't suffering don't like to address it because it's an issue. Um, people see it as more of a burden rather than something that has a solution, which can be fixed just by saying hi and making sure that someone feels like they have companionship. Some of the upcoming events for the week include suicide prevention training and anonymous compliments that will be handed out on the Hill. If you are interested in participating in Mental Health Awareness Week, you can find a list of events posted on the Health and Wellness website. ASWSU does want to emphasize that mental health awareness should stem beyond this week and to have students um, help out their fellow kooks. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Amber. Coming up after the break, Sierra Brown gives you an update on the weather. Today was a nice day, but we'll see if that weather is here to stay for Dad's weekend. Stay tuned. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back. Well, the sun was shining here on the Palouse today. Yeah, it was. Sierra, can we expect the sunshine to stay through the weekend? Well, Shannon, today the sun has come out to play. With all this cloud cover, it adds a little pep in your step. With that, let's get to today's forecast. <laughs> Well, tomorrow's forecast, actually. So tomorrow's forecast, it starts in the mid-50s, getting a little warmer, and then dropping down to the 40s in the evening. As far as our statewide map, we look to Pullman, beautiful sunshine. We go up to Spokane, it gets a little bit more cloudy, and as you can see, across the state, it gets more cloud cover throughout. However, there is a warm spell deep down in Vancouver, my home. Gotta love it. And with that, we'll move into the five-day forecast. As you can see, it clears up just in time for Dad's weekend. Woot woot! With, sun's, with sun, Friday and Saturday, a few showers Sunday, and Monday with a few clouds, and Tuesday it clears up. With that, that's all for tonight's forecast. Coming up, it's as dramatic as it can get. Devin Truby gives us the lowdown on the seventh game of the World Series. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. Ah, <sighs> the great outside. My new mom and I have a lot in common. So shiny! We both love the outdoors. That's not a flower. <gasps> and she knows a lot about wildlife. <gasps> a labradoodle. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play or even what you wear. You just need to be there. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. Let's talk sports. Coming up tonight, two season finales and another team just getting started. Sierra just reported some upcoming dry weather, but the massive amount of rain in October has damaged the Guy Wicks Field on the University of Idaho campus. The field has been deemed unusable for the 2016 Big Sky Women's Soccer Championship, scheduled today through Sunday. The games will now be played in Cheney at the Eastern Washington University Soccer Complex. The winner will receive a bid to the NCAA College Cup. 
Have the Warriors found a way to combine individual talent, or did Portland blaze right over them? Let's find out. Kevin Durant averaging 30 points a game, drives the baseline and slams it down. Plumlee with the back tap, Lillard up the floor, is going to split the defenders. They're going to count that basket and give him one. Now we have Clark hot off the bench, going to go ahead and sink that three for the Warriors. Bringing it down, we have a classic pick and roll. Plumlee slams it down with two hands. Steph Curry was two of ten from the three tonight, but now he's going to explode. The former MVP outscored the Blazers himself in the third quarter, 23 to 20. Now he's going to drive on down to the baseline with a little flip up and one. And he's going to face two guards now, but it's not going to be a problem for the former MVP. Here we go with two makes the play. Game six is all tied up, but let's take a look at the excitement from last night. In the very first inning, Chris Bryant is going to hit a solo home run and is going to slam against the wall. Now we have a catch a play all the way out into the field. This is going to make the center fielder be benched for game seven with that air. And we're going to have a takeout at the plate and Russell is actually going to come around and make it a triple. Here we have the next batter up and it's going to be a grand slam all the way out to left center field. Howard with the roll and makes the play. Here we go. Rizzo is going to pop it up into the stands. It goes sit down media man. No souvenir for you. Now we have Cleveland trying to make a comeback with the hit. It's going to go all the way back and hit the wall. What an exciting game. This play is definitely the best play of the night. What a run, and he's going to be safe. Let's go ahead and slow it down and look at just how close this play was. Absolutely amazing. And if you've ever considered waking a sleeping panda, you might want to think twice. We've got more on that story after the break. Clear the waterways because up-and-coming hip-hop artist Lil Yachty is sailing to Pullman. Students line the halls of the Compton Union Building at 8 o'clock this morning, waiting for the box office to open student tickets. Student tickets are already sold out, but don't worry, you still have a chance to grab some of the last general admission tickets from the Cougar Card Center. Lil Yachty will perform on December 1st, just in time for some fun before finals week. Occasionally we'll hear stories of home invasion, but this invasion in particular is one like none other. A camera captured an intruder of a panda enclosure at a zoo in East Asia. Zoo officials say panda named Mei Ling was resting when a man jumped the barriers of the enclosure. Mei Ling woke up and then started to wrestle with the intruder. Zookeepers believe that Mei Ling's intentions were not harmful, but rather playful. Zookeepers are now examining to make sure Mei Ling wasn't hurt during the encounter. That's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 o'clock, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Good night. That panda was adorable. Oh my gosh, I know. I know. I